2 Samuel chapter 12. Adonai sent Natan to David. He came and said to him, In a certain city there were two men, one rich, the other poor. The rich man had vast flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing, except for one little ewe lamb, which he had brought and reared. It had grown up with him and his children. It ate from his plate, drank from his cup, lay on his chest. It was like a daughter to him. One day, a traveler visited the rich man, and instead of picking an animal from his own flock or herd to cook for his visitor, he took the poor man's lamb and cooked it for the man who had come to him. David exploded with anger against the man and said to Natan, As Adonai lives, the man who did this deserves to die. For doing such a thing, he has to pay back four times the value of the lamb, and also because he had no pity. Natan said to David, You are the man. Here is what Adonai, the God of Israel, says. I anointed you king over Israel. I rescued you from the power of Shaul. I gave you your master's house and your master's wives to embrace. I gave you the house of Israel and the house of Yehuda. And, it, and that that had been too little, I would have added to you a lot more. So why have you sown sh such contempt for the word of Adonai and done what I seen as evil? You murdered Uriah the Hittite with a sword and took his wife as your own wife. You put him to death with the sword of the people of Ammon. Now, therefore, the sword will never leave your house, because you have shown contempt for me and taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite as your own wife. Here is what Adonai says. I will generate evil against you out of your own household. I will take your wives before your very eyes and give them to your neighbor. He will go to bed with your wives, and everyone will know it. If for you did it secretly, but I will do this before all Israel in broad daylight. David said to Natan, I have sinned against Adonai. Natan said to David, Adonai also has taken away your sin. You will not die. However, because by this act you have so greatly blasphemed Adonai, the child born to you must die. Then Natan returned to his house. Adonai struck the child that Uriah's wife had borne to David, and it became very ill. David prayed to God on behalf of the child. David fasted, then came and lay all night on the ground. Court officials got up and stood next to him, trying to get him off the ground, but he refused, and he wouldn't eat food with them. On the seventh day, the child died. The servants of David were afraid to tell him that the child was dead, because they said, While the child was still alive, we spoke to him, and he didn't listen to us. If we tell him now that the child is dead, he may do himself some harm. But when David saw his servants whispering to each other, he suspected that the child was dead. David asked his servants, Is the child dead? And they answered, He is dead. Then David got up off the ground, washed, anointed himself, and changed his clothes. He went into the house of Adonai and worship. Then he went to his own palace, and when he asked for food, they served it to him, and he ate. The servants asked him, What are you doing? You fasted and wept for the child while it was alive, but now that the child is dead, you get up and eat food. He answered, While the child was still alive, I fasted and wept because I thought... Maybe Adonai will show his grace to me and let the child live. But now that he's dead, why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I will go to him, but he will not return to me. David comforted his wife, Bathsheba, came to her and went to bed with her. She gave birth to a son and named him Shlomo. Adonai loved him and sent through Natan the prophet to have him named Yidyah, loved by God, for Adonai's sake. Yoav fought against Rabbah of the people of Ammon and took the royal city. Yoav sent people to David with this message, I have fought against Rabbah and captured its water supply. Therefore, assemble the rest of the people, lay siege to the city, and capture it. Otherwise, I will capture the city, and it will be named after me. David assembled all the people, went to Rabbah, fought against it, and captured it. He took the crown off Makam's head. It weighed 66 pounds with its gold and precious stones, and it was placed on David's head. He carried off great quantities of spoil from the city. In addition, he expelled the people who were in it and sent them to work with saws, iron harrows, and iron axes, or had them cross over to work in the brick factory. This is what he did to all the cities of the people of Ammon. Then David and all the people returned to Yerushalayim.